a senior here at Santa Catalina, and for most of my childhood, outgoing was the last word I'd use to describe myself. I've always been an introvert, always felt like the quietest in the room, always been self-conscious, always dreaded being awkward. I'm often quick to scrutinize the way I carry myself, the way I speak and the pauses in between, the way I smile, the way my eyes wander when I'm nervous. Sometimes it seems to take me weeks or months to make new friends or adjust to new circumstances. Clearly, my shyness is, for better or for worse, a huge part of who I am. Still, I don't believe that insecurities like these make us incomplete because I've learned instead that persistence makes us whole. Firstly, persistence shows us the beauty of beginning. I learned this when my family moved to this area just before I started second grade. Initially, I was terrified of adjusting to a new school environment. So in the mornings before school, I would hide in my closet and clutch my cat, Mr. Gray, to my chest, pretending to not hear my parents' calls that I would be late to class. I wouldn't leave my hiding spot until their car had practically pulled out of the driveway. And once I got to school, I would simply go hours not talking to anyone, glued to the side of my twin sister, Lizzie. Still, I slowly got used to being outside of my comfort zone. My closest friend who I met that school year says she first noticed and was taken aback by how quietly Lizzie and I would eat our snacks and then sit apart from everyone else at recess. But nevertheless, we quickly became inseparable friends, making fairy houses by the school soccer field and creating action-packed lives for a very large family of stuffed animals. In those moments, I knew the excitement of new opportunity, of feeling like a fish out of water, then watching a new home bloom before your eyes. Secondly, persistence allows us to achieve in the face of setbacks. I had to keep this in mind at the beginning of my junior year when I became the new head of the Lamplighter, Santa Catalina's student-run newspaper. Before the first Lamplighter meeting of the school year, I set aside my fear of public speaking and made my first announcement in school assembly, encouraging students to join the club. I brought two dozen donuts to that first Lamplighter meeting, and I was absolutely mortified when only two students showed up. I wanted to melt into the floor, but I couldn't stay embarrassed forever. I became determined to recruit new Lamplighter members, speaking to classmates across grades about student journalism, mustering the courage for many more Lamplighter assembly announcements, and spending hours guiding articles from drafts to ready to publish pieces. I loved watching the growth of the club. On the morning of publication dates, my sisters and I would come to school early and rush to leave snacks on all the writers' desks before first period started. By the end of that first semester, Lamplighter had 18 members, and this year that number has grown to 32. I've gained leadership experience beyond what I imagined, but on a larger scale, I've also learned that growth can only come from vulnerability, from acknowledging your setbacks, then realizing the, pit, the potential you have to overcome them. But what about today? Watching the world seem to stop in its tracks is so overwhelming, it's numbing. But after this unpredictable year, I've learned that lastly, Persistence gives us hope. Working through such an unusual senior year leaves me indescribably grateful for my family and determined to make the most of every opportunity, no matter how random or unexpected. And that is how I found training for a triathlon at the top of my end of senior year bucket list. The triathlon started with a one and a half kilometer swim, then a 40 kilometer bike ride, and then a 10 kilometer run. So in total, it was over 32 miles long. I had never done this race before. I had no training plan. And though I liked swimming and biking, I was not a runner. I was the type of person to dread and avoid running the monthly mile in middle school PE. But there was something exciting about saying why not to what seemed physically impossible. I started waking up at 6 a.m. many school days to bike before class and then in between classes, I would put on my shoes and run loops around my neighborhood. Swimming workouts would happen any time in between. I loved the little moments that came with training every day. From the inexplicable energy I got from waking up and biking 20 miles to a Backstreet Boys playlist all before 7.30 a.m. to the warmth of afternoon runs when the sun was out and the breeze felt like summer. 
after three months of training, race day was extremely exciting. Half of my excitement came from getting to compete in a tri suit, the semi intimidating one piece that racers wear for all three parts of the competition. The other entertaining part was the control chaos of the race. The weather was windy that day, so the swimming portion was comparable to being tossed around a wave pool. And then once I got out of the water, I found myself out of breath and trying to pull off my goggles, swim cap, and wetsuit while simultaneously sprinting barefoot to my bike for the next portion of the competition. Ultimately though, the most valuable part of this experience to me was the training process. Every time I pushed myself to take another stride or stroke, I grew stronger, I redefined my limits, and I learned to never give up hope in myself. In those moments, I saw that persistence doesn't always have to be heroic or earth shattering. Most of the time, it simply means putting in a little more effort for just a little while longer. Those moments in between, in between beginning and ending, setback and success, being and becoming, are what make us stubborn, optimistic, and eternal. I'll never claim to know how to live faultlessly, but I do know that there is purpose and humanity in that continual quest to live life as truly as, you, as we can. So as you reflect on today's theme of familiar faces, I hope you don't forget your own ability to persist when faced with unfamiliarity. Persistence isn't about holding yourself to insurmountable standards. It's about knowing your worth and taking the chance you have every day to wake up and try. Persistence isn't about perfection either. It's about committing yourself to what inspires you and making sure you never have to say, that could have been me. Regardless of your setbacks, you can always choose to fight for your growth. So never sell yourself short. As you face today and tomorrow, choose gratitude. And as you face your challenges, choose to find yourself. Thank you.